Good morning or afternoon. My name is Colin Makemson and I'm the Assistant Director of Education here at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, we're very happy you can join us for our third virtual innovation studio where we are going to look at some really fun science hands-on activities for uh, you can do as an individual, uh, but they're a lot more fun uh, to do with uh, friends, siblings, and also other members of your family. Typically, we do these programs uh, in our Kushner Restoration Pavilion, our STEM gallery here at the museum, but due to the current conditions and us wanting to be safe, we're coming to you virtually. So we're happy that you can catch us uh, on the premiere uh, on Saturday, March 20th, 2021, or catching us uh, on the rebroadcast. And if you were one of the 50 first families who registered for our virtual innovation studio, you received one of these from the museum. And inside these boxes that were mailed out to the first 50 registrants for our third virtual innovation studio are all the supplies and materials that you need to take part um, in our program. If you didn't get one of these boxes, don't worry. Uh, none of these materials and none of the items that we're gonna be working with today uh, are things you won't have, uh, uh, have an easy time finding around your house. So um, we're gonna be looking at three uh, science hands-on activities uh, this morning. Uh, all of them are focusing on time. It's uh, spring forward time, so we're moving our clocks forward and backwards, uh, getting a little bit more sunshine, which you know, makes me happy. Uh, I don't like waking up in the dark and going home to it as well. So uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, three activities that talk about time. Uh, time was very, very important, uh, both for the people fighting in World War II, and then also the folks back home uh, wondering when the war would end, when the fighting would stop. So we're gonna look at three uh, hands-on activities uh, having to do with time um, that can uh, tell us a lot about what was happening in World War II, but then also um, talk about the science behind these activities as well. So we're gonna look at uh, our first activity. I'm gonna pull it up on our document camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing uh, and you can follow along with me at home. And this is going to be talking about uh, a really ancient technology uh, of how people have been using to measure time um, you know, from really, really, really a long time ago. Uh, but uh, for one individual, especially during World War II, had a very, very special meaning and has a connection uh, to uh, his famous son, uh, who some of you may be familiar with as well. So let's go from me to look at what we're gonna be working with. So what we're gonna be working with today, guys, um, is we are going to be making uh, a sundial. A sundial is a very, very simple way for individuals to measure the passage of time. Uh, you can unpack it, a uh, sun uh, dial, uh, like a dial of a clock, and the sun is what is driving the movement of this, um, of this, of this dial, of this instrument used to measure uh, the passage of time. So what we're gonna need for our activity, obviously, I'm inside, but this works best when we are out in the sun uh, and the sun uh, is, is up, up, up ahead. If it's a bit cloudy uh, or a bit darker of a day, some of your uh, measurements um, may be a bit, uh, a bit skewed. So wait for a, a bright, sunny day. So all you need to make a sundial is um, what I have right in here in front of me. It's just a simple paper plate. I have sort of a small one. You can use bigger ones. You can also um, you know, use this template to expand if you wanted to make a really big sundial uh, using pieces of cardboard or um, you know, uh, boxes or even you know, some metal material. So we have a paper plate here. And the first step in making our sundial today is we need a pencil. And what we're gonna do is we are going to pass our pencil right through the center of our paper plate. Um, moms and dads, if you really want to make this, you know, challenging or more rigorous, you can uh, have uh, your 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 youngsters or whoever is uh, participating in this program with you, you know, to get out the tape measure and you know, take the measurements of, um, of of the plate to get the exact center. Maybe even talk about circumferences uh, and 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 things of that nature as well. But really, we want you to pass that pencil through the middle of our paper plate, uh, tip pointing up and the eraser on the bottom. So it sits really snug and secure. 
Now, you can even see in our studio that this pencil standing straight up, it does cast a shadow. And in our studio, it's just kind of a shadow. It doesn't really tell us that much. However, if you have a paper plate with a pencil sticking up through it and you take it outside uh, in the sun, you can actually use this simple device to measure the passage of time. So once you have your pencil passed through the, the middle of our paper plate, we're going to go outside. Like I said, it works best on a sunny day. Wait until the passage, uh, the Wait right until an hour is about to occur. It can be 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock. It can be high noon. Wait for uh, that time to pass. You can set your uh, alarm on your phone, your watch, uh, listen for church bells ringing or, or uh, the, your, your school period ending, um, and then place your paper plate outside and see the shadow it casts and record the time uh, along the length of that shadow. Keep coming back. Um, and looking uh, at your sundial, recording the place of the shadow uh, cast by the pencil, and putting down the appropriate hour. In the end, you'll have something that will look like this. So we have, like I said, a sundial, dial like a clock. We have kind of a clock face. All you'll need is um, a, a marker, a pencil, or a pen to record the direction um, and the angle of the shadow cast by this pencil and recording the times uh, uh, until you have uh, really all of the hours of the sunny day recording. Obviously, the sundial works during the day, doesn't work um, at night. And also, if you want to do some further illustrations, you know, I put some little, little, little sun shining to, uh, to, to dress mine up a little bit. But this is a very, very ancient way of recording the passage of time and a very accurate way uh, as well. Um, and uh, the World War II connection for this uh, we have is a story of uh, a gentleman who was captured, um, uh, who was a POW um, uh, in World War II, a man named Ned Nye, and uh, he was held prisoner by the Japanese, and one of the ways he uh, figured out how long he was being held and kept his sanity was he made big sundials wherever he was so he could record the passage of time. And Ned and I uh, um, uh, has a very, very famous uh, son, who some of you may be, may be familiar with, uh, who still comes on television programs to talk about the science behind things. Son was uh, Bill Nye, uh, the science guy. So the sundial connection from World War II to the present day. So that's how you make a very, very simple sundial. Uh, obviously very simple, but also very lightweight. So if you want to leave your sundial out for uh, any length of time, first also watch the weather, but you can also secure your sundial uh, to the ground uh, using tape, push pins, or even uh, just some rock so it, uh, you don't come back out to check the time and see your sundials flown away. So we're gonna stick with that theme of time like I, like I talked about at the very beginning, and we're going to look at uh, a way that we can make a calendar uh, a three-dimensional calendar, in fact, uh, looking um, at um, uh, some very, very uh, simple templates, um, making a something that's two-dimensional into three-dimensional. Now, if you are one of the first 50 families who registered for this program, you'll receive these templates uh, already printed out uh, for you in the mail. If you are not, uh, don't worry, we'll have these templates available, um, either emailed to you or available for download. So. Here we see on my, uh, my camera, I have uh, some templates uh, of some numbers on them. Obviously, except for February, um, most months have either 30 or 31 days. So we're gonna use these templates to uh, construct our calendar. Now, it's a weird T shape uh, with numbers lying flat. How is this a calendar? Well, this doesn't tell me anything. Um, what we're going to do and what you're going to do is you are going to cut this template out uh, and you're gonna fold in where you see the dotted lines on these two templates. Uh, the one that says zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and the one that says six, seven, eight, zero, one, and two. Also, what number do we not see? We don't see a number nine. So what you're gonna do if you need a nine for your calendar, you're gonna turn your six right upside down. 
Then the last step, we are going to cut out um, these, uh, this template, uh, and here we can see written uh, the months of the year. Uh, and again, similar to our past two templates, you'll see some dotted lines where you will fold them in. And when you're done cutting them out, they'll look like this. There's our months of the year. There are our days of the year, or dates of the year, rather. And when you fold them up into along those dotted lines, we leave uh, two dimensional uh, space behind, and we have all of our dates now in three dimensional form, like dice. So today we are on March the 20th. There we have it. We can flip those right around. Um, again, talking about uh, uh, what other dates and combinations we can have. All of our numbers are on here, but again, if you need uh, a date with a 9 in it, you can flip your 6 around and have 29, or on the other side, have 26. Um, and then beside um, uh, our, our numbers and our dates, we also have a way we can put our months of the year. This is what's called a perpetual day calendar. You can make these out of paper. You maybe have also seen them um, uh, made out of blocks or wood or plastic, uh, but it's a very simple way uh, to keep track. Uh, so here we have June, July, and into August, and then our other months of the year as they come in. But more than just being able to uh, keep track of time, you can also ask what else you could do with these. You can sort of like dice, maybe play some games with them. But also the idea of introducing um, how two-dimensional shapes uh, can take on three-dimensional characteristics and how they could be used. And again, something that's on paper, very, very easy to, um, to replicate and fix. Um, we secured these in place just with some tape you can use glue, glue sticks, um, or really any which way you want. Also, if you're wanting these to last a little bit longer, you could use cardstock or uh, even laminate them if you would like. So we're going to uh, look at another activity following this. Uh, again, sticking with time uh, and talking a lot about what the museum does uh, here in New Orleans. So we've made a calendar to mark the passage uh, of the year. We've made our sundial. Uh, to mark the passage of hours in a day. Um, what we're going to do as our last activity is uh, related to the science of time uh, and also about the passage of time. We here at the National World War II Museum, we deal with that a lot. Uh, World War II is 75, 80 years ago now. So a lot of things that come to the museum have passed through uh, a lot of different people's hands. Um, Sometimes the people who use them aren't the ones who give us uh, these items or artifacts or vehicles or stories. Um, but each person uh, is sort of a link in the chain of keeping memories and stories alive. Uh, the museum, if you like to think of it, it's kind of like a big time capsule. A time capsule uh, can be big or small, and it's something that uh, people put important or valuable items in, um, items that can tell you something about a culture or a people or a family or an individual. They can be big momentous things where the mayor or the governor or even the president puts some items uh, in a time capsule, kind capsule to be uh, unearthed in 100, 200 years. Uh, they're even sending time capsules into space now uh, as well. So. We're going through a pretty momentous time right now. Obviously, I'm coming to you virtually instead of in person here at our, uh, the Kushner Restoration Pavilion where we typically have these programs. So uh, I was going to talk to y'all uh, about um, maybe making an individual or a family time capsule um, that can use to mark this time period that we're in. Time capsules can be uh, fun, uh, depending on how long you want to keep them uh, 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 sealed. They don't have to be buried. They can be entrusted to your mom or dad or another family member to open and give back to you in three, four, five years, 10 years when you graduate high school or college. So we're going to be looking uh, at some things that if you were one of the 51st families to register for this virtual innovation studio, you'll have access to uh, these forms printed out for you. If you were not, uh, these forms and templates uh, will be available for you uh, by email or download. So let's take a look at some things that we can use for a time capsule. 
Now time capsules, like I said, can be big or small. Uh, this is just simply a, a, a an airport portable, uh, you know, shampoo uh, or um, you know FAA compliant container, uh, and I see you have a little top secret label uh, on there. It can be bigger things, uh, such as a mason jar, or like the one that I've chosen for my time capsule today. Um, just a little plastic tin uh, that you might put a, tooth, a toothbrush and toothpaste in. Um, and I've put a couple of things in my time capsule um, and don't have to use my example to uh, influence yours, but wanting to remember some things about this year, I've put obviously something we all are familiar with now, uh, a mask, uh, it's my New Orleans Pelicans mask. And then because we're here in New Orleans, um, I put uh, two Mardi Gras doubloons. Uh, we weren't able to have um, Mardi Gras as we typically do here. So somebody can remember this time, a mask, uh, and something we didn't get to have. Now, time capsules are interesting because, like I said, they don't have to be buried, but they are interesting in if you want to talk about the science of preservation and how things um, are influenced by the elements or how nature can really have its way with things. You were putting a time capsule together. What type of things might go best in here that might not work in here or vice versa? Is it better to bury something or keep something safe in plastic or glass or even cardboard or wood or metal? What type of things would uh, survive in a small plastic container that might not make it in a glass one? So in putting together uh, a time capsule, um, it's something that you can make these decisions about uh, and ask these questions about what you want to put in and what you want to preserve and why. It doesn't have to be uh, anything uh, you know, super uh, significant. It can be something funny. It can be a joke between your brother, your sister, your mom or your dad or, 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 your, or your classmates at school. Um, but anything you want to mark this time. And uh, you'll see I've got some cool labels on my little example time capsules. You know, time capsule top secret, don't open until with a date you can fill in later. Um, like I said, if you were one of the 50 first families to register for this program, you'll have access to those labels as also uh, other things that you could complete and fold um, and contain in these time capsules. You know, goals for the year, uh, goals for the next five, 10 years, which is a lot to think about. Um, a note from to, to me from me, so sort of like, you're speaking to your future self, uh, questions you might want to ask them um, about uh, where they are, uh, any advice or what they should expect in the future. Um, you know, uh, a message uh, from an, a wiser and older you, uh, you know, uh, talking to your, your older self. And then some goofy stuff as well uh, that you can look back on and laugh at or cringe at. Uh, favorite color, movie, book, even they got a favorite emoji. Uh, it's very, very up to date, uh, a time capsule here. So again, all of these forms uh, will be available, uh, either printed out or um, for download or email for these time capsules. But given the time that we're in now, um, it might be uh, a time to start thinking about uh, preserving some um, artifacts of your own families, uh, of where you, want, uh, uh, where you want to keep them and how you want to keep them uh, safe, especially uh, in this last year we've gone through. Uh, a lot of the things that we see in our daily lives from masks to hand sanitizer, you can best believe they'll probably end up in a museum someday. So I'd like to thank all of you for uh, tuning in today for our virtual innovation studio talking about spring forward science and the science of time. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed these activities. Um, if you have questions, um, please, please reach out to us for ways that we can better help you uh, and your families uh, explore fun hands-on activities, uh, themes that connect World War II to the present day, um, and also uh, uh, things that uh, hopefully can get uh, young minds excited about uh, the connections between history and science. My name is Colin Makemson, and again, I want to thank you for joining us here for our third uh, virtual innovation studio. We'll have another one coming up soon, so watch, uh, watch the museum's uh, events calendar uh, for that listing, and hope we see you registering there, and we'll see you again after a while.